Hey TG ready for story time? I hope so. Now a little bit of backstory before I make you fall head first into this dank crevice. October of last year I had watched all of the Godzilla movies in a marathon in preparation of watching a pirated copy of Shin Godzilla since it only showed in select theaters and I fell in love with it. At the time I was also planning to run a DD campaign, but I didn't know what on so using a bit of homebrew in the airship pirate system I made my own game and around the middle of November I made the following campaigns. The first campaign was about 5 of my players as Japanese biologists and the government as weird things have been going on with the environment. Whale corpses are washing up on beaches and radiation is spreading through the sea in small pockets before disappearing. This fucked up the ecosystem around Japan quite a bit so initially the campaign was really kinda boring. Several sessions and I would just have them go and see what weird shit is happening and to see their reasoning for it. One player even voiced her concerns about the game. But I told her there was nothing to worry about and I was just trying something new. None of them knew about the second game I was running. I told one of my friends about the campaign I was planning to do. You see I was just gonna have Godzilla be an NPC controlled by me, but after a long discussion my friend convinced me to let him play in the campaign, as Godzilla. Now before I go even further into the story here was the system I set up. The sessions would work as turns in a sense. One session we would spend with the humans as they try and predict where Godzilla would pop up next. They would also have to deal with Japanese politics along with international politics as well. Deploying the defense force and researching new ways to deal with Godzilla were also part of the game as well as you'll soon see. The next turn however was a little bit different. Godzilla's turn in the beginning of the campaigns was a little bit strange. The sessions would mostly go with my friend who I will be calling Frank going around the ocean collecting energy and mutating. Frank would also have to stay under the radar of the Japanese world governments. I would also like to point out that my human team didn't know of Frank in the other game. Made Godzilla a much more formidable foe in the end. Now for about 3 sessions I had my human players doing pretty basic work. They would go to a location take samples study it and that's it really. Their theory was that the Fukushima radiation spill was really fucking things up in the ocean. And while they couldn't explain the disappearing pockets of radiation they could explain the other happenings. Or so they thought because while I had them fucking around with dead animal corpses Frank was going on a fucking rampage. He was attacking nuclear subs like a fucking madman. Stealing the precious cargo within and in a very short amount of time he managed to rack up so much MP mutation points he believed he was ready for the reveal. And how right he fucking was. He starts by mutating into Godzilla's first form seen in the movie and moves into Tokyo Bay. Water begins boiling and a red substance is seen spreading throughout the water. My human team begins getting ready for what they think is just another job. The Japanese government starts evacuating citizens from the area due to reports of volcanic activity. My humans get to the scene in only an hour and set up a small base to see what the fuck is going on. Soon reports and rumors of a giant creature make their way to base and the team is freaking the fuck out, then a massive tail sprouts out of the water and begins waving around. They all shit their collective pants and pack the fuck out of there before seeing Frank start to move into the water canals. Once they get back to HQ they're immediately bombarded with questions by not only high ranking officials, but the prime minister himself. They start trying to form a plan as Frank finally makes his way on land. At this point he's already evolved into Karate Kun and is barreling down streets as fast as his legs will carry him. The local police try and stop him with various blockades and weaponry, but he makes all of his rolls and tells them all to fuck off with a headbutt to the everything. It's only when tanks begin to show up does Frank get serious. He charges a tank column at full speed taking shots as he does so. While Frank is throwing tanks around like chew toys the humans are trying to mount a full scale offensive with helicopters in the works. The team is analyzing everything about Frank as he fights the tanks. Everyone is very hopeful as the tanks are beginning to do a number on Frank since he's still just a wee babe. It isn't until the helicopters arrive does Frank get spooked and evolves into Shinagor Kun. The team shits their collective pants again and the prime minister allows all forms of weapon be used against Frank. And to make matters worse Frank is running out of steam and needs to get the fuck out of there. He does manage to escape albeit heavily injured. After Frank disappears under the water the team is left with some breathing room to operate. The leader of the team lets call her and is ordered to talk with the prime minister and Bolly manages to keep her job. The rest of the gang heads out to collect samples of Frank for analysis before discovering that everywhere he went is irradiated as fuck. Frank is fucking pissed. All he did was go on to land to see new shit. 
But all these assholes begin attacking him so in retaliation he eats a nuclear power plant and sinks a shit ton of fishing ships building up even more MP. At this point the US and Russia is involved and along with the team set up a base of operations at the central government building and start getting to work theorizing about what the fuck Frank is. Until after a little hinting they figure out he's radioactive and uses nuclear fission to function. Over the course of two sessions they have planned and set up military forces at Tokyo Bay and other places of interest where they believe Frank will surface again. They also get a name to this threat, Gojira. Frank makes several more nuclear subs go missing and upgrades his current form. He can now shoot small plumes of smoke from his mouth. Neat. He begins moving back into Tokyo Bay. The team's predictions were accurate and Frank comes back ashore in Tokyo Bay, and with a fucking vengeance. The second he gets on land he charges into a building filled with infantry and munitions reducing it to a pile of rubble. Frank doesn't even get slowed down as he begins slaughtering civilians by the hundreds as they try and evacuate. You can imagine the horror when you're woken up in the middle of the night to see a giant monster rampaging through the streets killing people by the dozen every time it moves. And in the prime minister try and keep the peace by lying to the public that they have a way to defeat Gojira. But the public isn't buying it as Frank continues his path of destruction towards Tokyo. The defense force is doing its best to try and halt Frank's path, but he seems to be unstoppable, until the artillery started to fire. Now Frank was making his ridiculously easy wound save rolls, but artillery was strong, really strong and Frank was getting his ass pounded every which way. Infantry is advancing with a prototype rocket launcher made just to kill him. Red then fills the air as Frank begins to glow, his jaw unhinges and a plume of smoke bellows forth covering the battlefield with the irradiated smoke. And in the dust the figure of Frank begins getting larger and larger. The evacuation of Tokyo is going really goddamn poorly due to panic and looting taking place pretty much everywhere. The police are trying to stop what they can, but with all the chaos they are hopelessly fucked. Anne and friends are starting to pack up as last they saw Frank was still heading towards Tokyo. The dust doesn't even have time to settle as a gigantic foot crashes into the ground below. Frank had now evolved into his fourth form, Kamakura-san. Helicopters, tanks, artillery, and bombers are now focusing all fire on Frank as he moves slowly into Tokyo crashing into several buildings. America is moving their asses into gear and is deploying bombers. Russia is doing the same. Frank with his newfound powers unhinges his jaw again and it splits apart. An absolutely gigantic plume of smoke bellows out from his mouth and into the streets on Tokyo. Many civilians are caught in the plume including two of the team. Then Frank turns purple and this plume turns into a torrent of fire that lights all the remaining smoke alight. Frank rolled so many fucking successes I tallied the damage to be a little more than half of Tokyo. But the carnage didn't stop there. As the bombers closed in the fire coming out of Frank's mouth became smaller and smaller until it became a purple beam of death. Many more buildings were simply cut in half by the beam and the city is beginning to look more like a pile of rubble than a city. Two of the team die in the fire and another dies by a skyscraper falling on him. Only Anne and the computer guy is left. The Russian bombers got to the scene first and started shelling Frank with everything they got. This of course only served to anger Frank and he began shooting his beam into the sky in an attempt to destroy the bombers. It wasn't until the American bombers got to the scene did Frank realize he was fucked beyond belief. The American bombers did miss the first few drops. But the next round of bombs caught Frank in his meaty thighs crippling him. Frank's Regan rolls were horrible, only managing to heal a little at a time as the bombers keep pounding him into the dirt. Meanwhile Anne is beating up with ground forces in an attempt to collect the growing samples for study the only problem is that the bombers aren't calling off the attack and the surrounding area is a fucking death zone. Computer guy got the fuck out of the city. Aside from getting shelled to absolute hell Frank has almost no nuclear power left in him as that atomic breath is expensive shit. He begins panicking. He has Godzilla try and thrash around. But he finds that he can't move. I tell him to make one more heal check. 13 fucking successes. Fucking what? He manages to stand back up and he begins charging further into the city at a snail's pace. Luckily for him however the bombers go back to refill ammunition. Ground forces and then begin moving in as the bombers make their way back to HQ. Their advance doesn't last long as they see a very wounded Frank practically stumbling their way. Tanks are crushed underfoot and Frank's blood is getting on everything. Many soldiers die from the cascade of liquid falling on them and the rest of the infantry move in to collect more samples. Except for Anne. Tanks are ordered to fire on Frank and after a few saving rolls he tumbles back down to the ground again. Shells are actually penetrating him because of the bomber wounds. 
As Frank continues getting ass blasted and walks into no man's land causing the tanks to stop firing. And comes face to face with the dying Frank and just goes fucking off on him. She is literally screaming at a fucking god on earth as it takes its last breaths. That isn't the end though. She climbs on some rubble and starts kicking Frank. This halts the defense force long enough that after a good in-game half hour of kicking Frank has healed. A lot. His mouth opens one final time and it goes from plume to fire to bream in an instant. He gets back on his feet and obliterates the tanks before turning back to Anne. Anne is crying and is still screaming at Frank who is going into coma mode after expending too much energy. His legs give out and Frank crashes back down to the ground and crushes Anne. I decided to end the campaign there as the only guy still alive got the fuck out of there. Frank joined us for the last session and I revealed that I was doing a campaign with him. They were amused. The end. Oh, how good is that now? Like, you know, just a nice wee short story time. You know, it feels like it's been so long since we've done one, but I've done, like, loads in the past few while, like John T.S. Age and, or the Fur Heresy, you know? Just nice wee, like, you know, one, you know, just do it once. And, like, you know, and it's not, like, big, long, multiple hours, multiple parts, you know, big, huge, grand storylines, you know? This is just a nice go-over, you know? But, uh, no, who doesn't enjoy a good wee Godzilla movie from time to time? Or just, like, any old monster movie. Like, you know, there's something about them. Like, see old B-movies, B they really do have their own, like... I know, they've just got charm to them. Like, you know, I went through a big phase there of, you know, the Puppet Master series. Like, you know, uh, if you haven't seen Puppet Master, I recommend giving it a go. It's a lot of fun, because all the wee puppets have got, like, different not abilities but they're all like you know they're really creative and i really enjoy them like you know the looks of it all like you know it's it, they're they shit horror movies but like you know they're a lot of fun like you know like there's so much cheese in them and they're so stupid by today's standards but like you know they're just fun you know and that's something i think you don't really get all that much with movies these days like you know them you're missing out on that you know that fun aspect you know, I don't know, maybe that's just me. But hey, no, I thought this was a pretty creative idea for a D&D &D setting. Like, you know, it's not your stereotypical, you know, fantasy or sci-fi setting. It's a bit like John the TSA agent, you know. It's it's something really different that I really enjoy. And like, you know, I'm sure, like, you know, any of you guys out there, like, you know, I would love to have a go at this because, like, you know, the guy, like, you know, it's gone. It. It, see, it's, it's these types of people, these type of DMs really make the game what it is you know if you have a great dm it's amazing you know and like you know having gone on two different games at the same time and they don't even like really know of each other i really want to know how long it took them to work out like you know they were playing a dn uh, 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 a fucking godzilla D, &D game like, i think that's amazing you know um like, you know, the way he did it was just great. Like, you know, keeping them both hidden and then and just at the very end. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, that's pretty cool. But, hey, have you ever done anything like this before? Like, you know, anything similar? Like, you know, any settings? Like, you know, you, they, these are the sort of things that I think, like, give people ideas and, like, oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do that. You know, like, I could maybe, like, you know, do a role playing game set in, like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street or, you know, like, anything. Like, you know, it could be a lot of fun. And, like, you know, you could do, like, there's so many options and potentials to work with like you know just look at john tsa agent for god's sake it's so silly but like you know it's it, you can do anything you want and that's what really makes it for me anyway but hey <laughs> like i'm rambling now so i am so like you know i'll just get along with it and um, let us know have you ever done anything like this of does this give you ideas what would you like to do you know let us know down below i always love reading through the comments they're a lot of fun and uh, also of course remember to like and subscribe like you know stay up to speed with all the new videos all that jazz and look, i hope you guys have enjoyed and i'll see you soon if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this, please?